says here 9.13 millimeters. Two strong coils for your engine. I'll try to. Now I can get. Hello there and welcome back to another one of my videos. This video is a follow on from the last one I did on the four point heat seizure. So we're going to be discussing whether the four point heat seizure is uh, caused by fat studs or not. So today we're going to do a little bit of myth busters. Right, we're going to be talking also about oils and flash points and additives, two stroke oils for your engine. I've tried to find some information on YouTube and uh, it's pretty vague, uh, not many people do it, they set fire to it and do all sorts of things like that but they uh, really don't give the normal punter any information on uh, what you should really be looking for when you're buying a two stroke oil. So, the first thing you want to be doing when you buy a two-stroke oil is look on the back of the bottle or some of it have the information on the front of the bottle and if it hasn't got the information on the bottle you can look it up on the internet and you will find all the specifications on that oil. Right, you want to be looking for the specs, what it's passed, what, what, what spec specifications your oil passes. Uh, most of them will have Yasso on the back, which is the Japanese Automotive uh, Standards Organization. They do their own tests, and that if once that oil passes that specification, they get Yasso put on there. You've also got API, which is a, just another test organization. It's the American one, the American Petroleum uh, Institute. They do a test on air. Then you've got other abbreviations for ISO, MA, MB, FB, they're all uh, like other specifications that oils pass. Uh, and you need, to be, you need to be looking at these, these uh, things on the back. MA, now anything that's got MA on the back is normally in a gearbox oil or engine oil because that's for, for wet clutches. So if it's got MA, it won't be a two stroke because that's not going in a clutch. Right, now it comes down to, we're gonna have a little talk about uh, flash points. Flash points are really important when you're picking an oil for your bike. Uh, if, you, if you're running a water-cooled modern engine, then it's much easier, because most of the oils that they sell now have flash points in a good range for water-cooled engines. So a water-cooled engine are normally running between 70 to 90 degrees Celsius uh, and that's maintained by a thermostat so they, they, they regulate their temperature uh, through the thermostat so they're running um, fully synthetic oils but they'll be running a range between 80 and 90 Celsius on the flash point that is good for them high performance racing bikes will be running a higher flash point but if you're running a very high flash point you've got to beware that you're going to have to strip your engine and clean it on a regular basis because high flash point oils leave more gunge and deposits behind they don't burn off at lower temperatures so air cooled engines if you're using on motorway use or racing or you've got a really high tuned motor you really want to be going for a high flash point oil so you're looking at rock oil, which is about 150 Celsius flash point. So you could also go for something like Motel 800, which has got 250 C Celsius flash point, really high flash point. But then you're going you, you're gonna to have to strip motors down after every like 3,000 kilometers. Uh, you're going to have to clean it, take it apart, clean it up clean all the rings and take all the deposits off there because you will get a build up of gunge on there because you're not running at full speed all the time. They're designed to run at high speed, high RPM and high temperatures without that flash point burning off. Okay, we're still on flash points at the moment. 
and we're going to explain why they're so important. Right, piston in the bore has clearance between the piston and the barrel. As the piston comes down and it explodes and you, you have your, you, you, you detonate the fuel, right, you ignite the fuel, the fuel with the right air, air to fuel ratio should burn off practically all of your fuel air mixture and it'll just be spent gases going down. The oil should also have exceeded its flash point and therefore burnt off. So therefore you're not getting oil and smoke going down your exhaust. So it burns off and leaves less deposits. Then you get new gases come in again and replace the old with new and recoats that bore again. The back of the piston should always be getting coated by fresh oil and fuel and it acts as a cooling agent on the piston. So that's keeping your piston and bore cool. So then it comes back to our four point seizure. We've got two lots of studs here. We've got a rolled stud, which when you measure it, we will measure it. This is a normal room temperature at the, at the moment. And it's measuring at, we'll measure them. They are 7.87. Now, this is just the straight stud, straight cut stud, right? So the middle is wider, and this is the stud that they all think is creating four point heat seizures. Now, the stud is 7.9 millimeters and the threads are 7.88 so it's almost completely straight throughout its length but even this one when it fits in the barrel there's plenty of space plenty of space and that's because the stud holes which we'll measure now we get our little gauge release off and we'll measure the internal diameter of the hole is let's get it right just right well it says here 9.13 millimeters so they're basically 9 mil and your studs are basically pretty well 8 mil so you've got, what, even the fat ones are 8 mil. These are actually under, these are 7. So you've got one millimeter of clearance. So this theory where you think that the studs get fat and pressurize the bore on the four points to create a heat seizure is, has that got any, any fact behind it? I don't think so. It sounds pretty crap to me that you expect this uh, 8 mil stud to expand above 9 mil. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little experiment with it. We're going to heat it up and see how big it can actually get at a reasonable temperature, let's say 100 Celsius, which is way over what it should get. Let's have a go. Okay, we've got the, uh, the fat stud. Here, the so-called fat stud, the criminal stud that creates everybody's heat seizures. And what we've done is we've put a heat sensitive strip on there. So we can know what temperature it is uh, when we re-measure it and see how fat it actually becomes. Obviously it needs to exceed 9 millimeters to actually have any pressure on the inside of the uh, the stud holes on your barrel. Is it going to go up to nine millimeters or anywhere near it or will it be myth busted? <laughs> so let's start heating it up.
Now this heat gun should go up to, I think, 900 Celsius. I don't think we're going to need that, but uh, it's going to take a little bit to heat this stud up, and then when we've heated it up, we're going to take a measurement of it. Obviously on the hottest part where the heat gun is. And it's just starting to move now. Whoop. As you can see, the strip's starting to react. We're now on uh, 77 degrees. Now when I've fitted these strips on the back of uh, barrels and stuff, they don't normally go past about 80, 90 degrees. There she goes, she's going up rapidly now. We're going to take it right up to about 100 degrees and then we're going to take a measurement. Okay, it's now 120 degrees Celsius. It's struggling to get it any hotter than that. So we're going to go straight back on. We're going to zero this. So we went from 7.95 on the straight cut to this straight cut one that's been heated up to 120 Celsius. It's now 8.06. So it has got bigger, but it's only Minimal, minimal. It's still got another millimetre to go almost to get anywhere near that. So maybe if you heated the studs up to about 900 Celsius, you might be able to do it, or a thousand degrees Celsius. But you ain't gonna get it up to 9 mil to actually put any pressure on these stud holes. So, what do you think people? Leave your comments down below. What do you think? The fat studs, the thin studs, we didn't even bother doing the thin studs, it's pointless because they're already way too small to go anywhere near doing anything in your barrel. But the fat stud starts off at 7.95 mil, but our cylinder holes are 9 mil, but even when we've heated it up to our over 120 Celsius, it's only gone up to 8.04. So I would say that is myth 
Busted! <laughs> Who's the daddy? Right, I think we can all say that that myth is totally and utterly busted. There's other theories about this. Mr. Mark Broadhurst has got a theory that it is not the studs anyway. And his theory, in, if you look it up in his uh, website about uh, four point seizures and the studs, he reckons it's pressure on the barrel as it's over tightened, creating distortion. That would have to be a completely new experiment. But I'm not gonna do that. We're not gonna go down that, that road because we never mess with Mr. Broadhurst. Oh no, he's the best. <laughs> but I think he's wrong. <laughs> the mad professor here says, it's because of the voids and the lack of cooling around that stud area that you get the hot spots. And I'm sticking with that. So leave your comments down below and let's start the fight today. As the main man says, never barrage the farage. See you all later. Bye.